LinkedIn. Good to catch up again. Um, let's just jump straight into the matter of um, you know the flavor of the year, supposedly, which is Gen AI and AI in general. Is this something you know you think we should be enthusiastic or scared about? What, what's your real deep view on this? Morning, Phil. I think uh, thanks for having me. It's a it's a double edged sword, right? Uh, like all new disruptive tech, this is definitely something that you have to be excited about. And at the same time, if you're not acting with urgency, you know, either as a business owner, enterprise you know, tech company, you have to be scared of it as well, because it definitely has the potential of reshaping, rewiring, and resetting the way we think about a lot of things that we do, you know, in, in business today. Not unlike a lot of other disruptive techs, uh, you know, uh, favorite moments that came about in the last 30, 40 years as well. So I think it's it's an exciting time, uh, but it's also a scary time if, you, if you're not uh, taking action around it. How would you think then with a lot of the developments we've seen in Gen AI, for example, how do you see the value um, for the enterprise as we start to evaluate um, how to really exploit these technologies? I think uh, firstly, AI is something that has been in the works for better part of the last 50 years, maybe even longer. So this isn't something that crept up on us with no notice, no warning. Uh, I think this is a, a congruence of many things that have been under development from compute power to availability of large data sets to, uh, in general, the ability to, to, to start uh, you know, throwing a lot of resources at solving these problems. So to me, I think we are, we are undergoing a pretty significant uh, in enterprise pivot across pretty much every business line where if you play this right, you have the opportunity and the potential to take a very large chunk of productivity back into the business. Uh, now, that doesn't mean that you don't have to work for it or, uh, or align a lot of your resources to, to be able to harness the power of this tech. But at a very high level, I think this is definitely something that, that will have a much better, bigger impact from a productivity standpoint. And by definition, that means that we'll see a reshaping of a lot of things that as, they, as they're done today. Uh, skill sets, jobs, uh, you know, people who do manual operations, uh, even software engineers, almost every aspect of, uh, of the value chain, you know, has the potential to, to adopt AI and, and really do things in a different manner. So if we look at a year from now, um, what do you expect from Gen AI in terms of reaching a, any type of scale, and further advancements or breakthroughs that you're anticipating that are going to change this as well? And finally, what do you think may have disappointed us if we look back in a, uh, in, the, in a year? So I think, Phil, uh, we have to play the long game here. Uh, it's very hard to pinpoint what happens in 12 months or you know 18 months, but I think this is the start of a major journey. Democratization of AI is, uh, is, is probably the biggest theme of 2023, but let's also not forget that uh, you know, as human beings, we tend to overestimate the impact of tech in the short run and underestimate in the long run, right? That's Roy Amara's law. Uh, I think as, as much as uh, you know, the, the impact is visible, it will take time for enterprises to set up the data pipelines, have clean availability of data, have model management platforms, and by the way, do it in a manner that is traceable, secure, ethical. So I think this is the start of a journey. Uh, while we are excited about it, this isn't something that will reshape and rewire the world in 2024. But it's definitely every year you will see the impact play out in some part of the enterprise or not. So, you know, the conversations you're having with your clients and other folks in the industry, um, what are they overly concerned about and what are they not concerned enough about? I think everyone's in, in a discovery kind of phase right now. And the, the good news is that uh, this is now a board conversation topic. So there is almost every enterprise has a point of view on what they've taken back to the board and the exec team. And this is being driven really top down. Uh, I think the, the general consensus seems to be, let's find you know at least two or three really large impact areas versus doing small pilots and proof of concepts, of course. A lot of our clients have been doing that for the last few months. Uh, so the first instinct always was, this isn't secure. You know, we don't want chat GPT to get access to our data. So I think security is probably the number one concern, both in terms of security of data, 
uh, as well as privacy concerns because remember a lot of industries you know are highly regulated banking healthcare insurance so i think there's a fair degree of focus right now on making sure that the infrastructure is available uh, you know the right um, i mean the answer isn't to start setting up you know private stacks in in every enterprise and you, ju- you just lose the power of uh, 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 you know of something that is uh, that is highly scalable so I think I would say the next six to 12 months, the focus really will be all on making sure we have the right infrastructure in place. We have the right pipelines in place. We have the right relationships in place with the right providers of of, of this uh, capability. Then, of course, uh, there is this open debate around, do I really want to use a public LLM or should we start thinking about industry case LLM, right? Banking should have its own LLM, LLM. insurance should have its own LLM. So I think that that debate will go on for a while until the right answer emerges. And the right answer will probably be somewhere in the middle uh, and i think finally uh, the ability to to really start reskilling people is probably the other third big area that every enterprise uh, you know is talking about i mean if you, if you really think about the debate between ai replacing jobs i think where the consensus is now narrowing down to is it's not that ai will replace humans it will replace humans who don't use ai so let's just reskill our people and make sure that they understand how to use this technology uh this is still uh, early days and uh, i think uh, if you just stay forward leaning and you just you know make sure that that you're finding the right application areas without getting very focused on small use cases i think 24 will be a very exciting year okay so a broader perspective than just tinkering at the edges interesting um so in terms of your own business um how fast do you feel you have to move particularly in the services industry with skilling up and reskilling a lot of your people and um you know what you, what you, can you share some insights on how you're doing it i think we're taking a very forward leaning approach we are being very bold uh, and as you know business is always relative we have to be faster than the next guy and hence i think agility and and ability to construct solutions fast uh, is something that we are really really focused on uh, i think the the other thing to keep in mind is uh, we have seen these kind of pivots before of course this is a much bigger one but whether it was adoption of all things public cloud right virtualization of of uh, applications uh, effectively the bet we made in 2016 17 was that data center of the future will be an empty room and again you know we've seen the impact of that in the last 5 6 years uh, we are saying we are taking a very similar power, you know approach here in terms of of really forward focusing on how can we solve more complex problems that accelerate the entire tech transformation agenda for for a number of enterprises because they're dealing with a, a plethora of of legacy issues this is uh, this is not rpa this is really super turbo boosting a lot of manual operations that happen in the back office as we look at it, the broader society how things are impacted um and arms races with who's going to take the lead here obviously india's um uh, in incredible in terms of building up such a hot bed of tech talent over the last 30 years or so um how is this going to impact india do you think that this will further accelerate development or do you think there's going to be some period of um a rebalancing as uh, other providers other countries may may try to get ahead with with tech development here uh coming to india i think we are probably one of the best placed uh, you know both in terms of our local economy and more importantly in our ability to actually really create a large pool of talent almost in any new skill that is required primarily because of the way we we've, we've embedded this industry our industry into the educational ecosystem from from an engineering and and uh, design standpoint so i think Uh, the grassroots foundation level in, you know uh, connection with our industry is very strong uh, we have the ability to start creating you know large pools of talent we've seen that before uh, we've seen that around y2k we've seen that with digital we've seen that with cloud we've seen that of course with with it operations we've seen that with business process operations so i think the as long as we are very clear as to where those large you know application areas are uh how do we make sure that we are able to align uh, solutions to to skills and uh, i think you you'll see 3 or 5 years from now we'll probably have the largest ai workforce on the planet well on that note largest ai workforce um 
coming from India. That's tremendous. Um, this has been awesome. I really enjoyed a lot of your insights. Um, humans under threat from AI, are those not doing AI? I'll take that away very much. Um, and the um, the way industry is uh, evolving, we just got to keep moving forward. So I really appreciate your time. I look forward to sharing this with everyone.